With this talk, I was really aiming to help um, GPs understand the difference between using techniques of, of relaxation and um, using mindfulness um, as it's taught in mindfulness-based cognitive therapy and stress reduction, which are eight-week courses and, and actually um, really are very um, effective treatments for stress, anxiety, depression and a variety of um, psychiatric disorders, quite, quite different in fact to techniques of relaxation. Patients often need to be supported through those. They need a really good understanding of why they would put aside eight weeks of their life and practice each day, um, set aside sometimes 30, 40 minutes a day for practices. Um, and it can be really essential to have a GP who understands what those courses are about, but also um, what the patients stand to gain in terms of potentially needing reduced medication and reducing the risk of relapse. Working with patients who um, present distressed and especially in a work environment where patients are coming and going, it actually takes a lot of emotional energy to engage, to attune, to really try and listen carefully to people and at the end of the day, turn around and go home and, and engage with your own family, your own life. Um, so it can be incredibly helpful as a doctor um, to really understand and use these skills and, and that's exactly what I do and I use it during the day to sort of um, pay attention to how tired I am, whether my mind is drifting, how much attention I'm able to pay, whether in fact a patient might be making me feel a little irritable or reactive and how to regulate that. There are apps, um, a very good one is Smiling Mind, um, but I think it's very important that doctors understand that um, it's also easy for patients to assume that if they listen to a guided meditation or an app, um, that somehow that's going to uh, result in a more relaxed state and, and a reduced um, you know, recurrence of their anxiety or depression. In fact, that's not the case. Uh, I think that the use of these apps can be very helpful as an adjunct, but if we're really talking about um, an intervention for stress, anxiety, depression or mental illness, then understanding um, the rigour really and the structure of these eight-week courses is really essential. Engaging in mindfulness meditation often involves um, having to uh, experience uncomfortable states, distressing thoughts, difficult emotions and you know, that really gets to the heart of the fact that it is actually, um, rather than a tool of relaxation, it's actually um, an exposure that we're really asking patients to undertake and then to learn how to regulate their emotion and, and access what we call executive function, frontal lobe skills, um, such as better attention and concentration, more focus, more clear thinking. Stress, burnout um, is very common in our profession. Um, I'm so grateful for all the training I've had in mindfulness and I really can't um, recommend it highly enough really as a way of taking care of yourself and opening doors to being able to manage patients in a really very different way, stepping away from an illness model to one of, of just stress and understanding that really we all have the capacity to shape our brains in different ways that are not so reactive to the things which are inevitable often in life and are difficult.